Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be overviewing some basic electronic components. However basic, these components play critical roles in technology today. They have shaped the world as we know it. Because of these tiny pieces of metal and silicon, our world's technology has surpassed the wildest imaginations of our forebearers. Whether it's building cities, taking us to the moon, or sending a text, it really is amazing what they can help us do. The components we will be overviewing are resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors. To understand these components, you need to understand the basic properties of electricity. First, voltage can be interpreted as electric pressure, current as electric flow, and resistance as electric obstruction. To start, we will talk about the resistor. It is one of the most common and practical electrical components. Its basic function is to limit current flow in a circuit. For example, here, we see an LED connected to a battery without a resistor. The battery is 5 volts, but the LED requires 3 volts. In the case without the resistor, the LED is damaged from the overload. Add a resistor wired in series so the voltage drops to the required 3 volts and the LED will function properly. The resistor always consists of a material that can limit the current flow and dissipate the energy into heat. There are several kinds of resistors, each of which carry a different form and application. Fixed resistors are the most common. They are used to set the right conditions in a circuit. Their resistance is fixed and does not change. Some types of fixed resistors are carbon film resistors, where a film of carbon material is wrapped around a ceramic cylinder in a helix. Metal oxide film resistors, where a metal oxide is wrapped in the same way. And wire wound resistors, which are often used for higher power applications. Then there are variable resistors, which have one resistor element and a slider that changes the position on the element, therefore changing the resistance. Typically, they have three leads, the first being the source, the second, output, and the last, ground. They can control things like volume, brightness, or motor speed. Moving on to capacitors. A capacitor is used to store an electric charge, however, in a different way than a battery. While a battery is designed to charge and release energy over a long period, capacitors are designed to charge and release much more quickly. A common application for capacitors is to smooth out and clean up any noise or AC interference for sensitive electronics. A capacitor consists of two conductors with an insulator dielectric separating them. The conductors have equal and opposite charges on them, creating a potential difference. Capacitance can be changed by altering the surface area of the conductive material and the thickness of the dielectric. Increasing the surface area of the conductors increases capacitance. To maximize capacitance in a small space, capacitors utilize multi-layering. In this diagram, you can see how multi-layering works. This employs the same principles of conductor, insulator, conductor, just repeated many times. Ceramic capacitors consist of a ceramic disc or discs with conductors on either side. These are the most commonly used capacitors on lower voltage electronics. Electrolytic capacitors are a bit more interesting. They are polarized and often contain higher capacitance than other types. They utilize a coil of oxidized aluminum which is spaced apart by a coiled sheet of electrolyte impregnated paper. This technique allows for microscopic thin sheets to be used, thus creating very high capacitance. One downside of electrolytic capacitors is their tendency to degrade over time. The capacitance will still measure the same However, the resistance to current flow may not. This is because of a chemical degradation of the electrolyte. This can cause problems when the capacitor is used on sensitive electronics. Diodes. Diodes have many unique uses. However, their general purpose is to limit the flow of current to one direction but not the other. In the water flow analogy, diodes can quite simply be compared to a one-way valve. Diodes have two main functional factors. The first is the factor of desired current you want to flow through the diode. 
it is essential to use a diode with the correct rating, or else the diode may fail and begin to overheat. The second factor is peak inverse voltage. This refers to the maximum voltage the diode will prevent from flowing in the wrong direction. If this voltage is exceeded, the diode will avalanche and allow current to flow in the incorrect direction. Some common types of diodes include the following. PN junction diodes. This diode is thought of as the standard general purpose diode. It uses a PN silicon junction to control the direction of current flow. It is used to rectify currents at different ratings depending on their size. Light emitting diodes, usually called LEDs, these are used for lighting purposes. Since they are designed for lighting specifically, they have an unusually low tolerance for peak inverse voltage. Because of this, it is important to be careful when wiring them into a circuit correctly to avoid damage. Transistors. Transistors are the backbone of modern electronic technology. Almost every electronic device uses them, and all computers must have them. Their components consist of silicon, a semiconductor, just as with diodes. This means they can either be conductive or non-conductive. Transistors are typically either used as a switch or an amplifier. Although transistors come in many different forms, each with their own use and application, we will be looking at the common NPN transistor and how it can function as a switch. The NPN transistor has three pins. In this diagram, you can see that the device has a base pin, a collector pin, and an emitter pin. The transistor is wired in series with a power supply and an LED. What you can see is that the LED is not lit because there is no current flowing through the transistor. This is because, by default, transistors are in their non-conductive state. Something must change to turn the transistor on. To do this, we must apply a voltage to the transistor. You can see the collector and the emitter are wired into the circuit, however, the base is not. This is where current must be applied to turn on the transistor. Once current is applied, we can observe that the LED is now illuminated and current is flowing normally through the circuit. When current is taken away from the base, the LED turns back off as the transistor is no longer turned on. This is how the transistor can act as a sort of solid state relay switch. You might wonder what the practical use of a transistor is if you could simply use an analog switch. The practical use of a transistor is its incredible speed. Transistors in modern computers are very small and very fast, and we could not have anything close to modern computing technology without them. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and we hope this helped. If you have any unanswered questions, or any suggestions for future videos, feel free to let us know in the comments.